Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews and uh, everyone reckons I look younger in HD. Isn't that amazing? So imagine how young I look in real life. Well today I'm going to be looking at the Horizon HD camera from Foxtech FPV came in that little box and I've been having a close look at it and I've uh, had a bit of a fly stuck it on my AXN and must say the video looks a lot better than my keychain my number 11 keychain camera and I've got a number of observations to make about this camera first is that this little header unit little head unit here is actually quite easy to uh, to mount I put some velcro on it although I did something wrong because although the image came up upright on the little LCD screen here that is to say with the writing up the right way the image was up the right way when I put it onto my computer it was upside down so but the timestamp was up the right way so I have no idea what happened there something very strange I'll look closer at that see if I can work it out but suffice to say it all fit on, it all fits on the AXN very nicely this actually fits inside the canopy so it's all out of harm's way it's probably got least just about the same drag as my keychain camera and it, everything flew very well now got some observations first of all about the way this camera is built and I already mentioned those in an earlier video that I don't like the fact that the LCD goes along for a ride that just seems silly to me um, why take all that extra weight along an extra bulk I also don't like these buttons they're absolutely awful they've got a kind of a membrane keyboard but perhaps because of the quite stiff heat shrink that's been put over the top of them they're really really hard to operate very very hard indeed and you've got to use your fingernail and push quite hard to make them make contact which detracts from the utility of the camera the off on switch is also in a really crappy place it's kind of hidden right down now let's see if this new Sony camera will focus on me not going to focus is it no Ooh, is it no anyway the off on switch is right in there behind the heat shrink so it's actually a real pain in the backside to turn the damn thing off now you've got to hold that down for several seconds so you've got to use a screwdriver or something to hold it down and who wants to take a screwdriver out with them every time they go to fly their model it just doesn't make sense now I've got a suggestion for Foxtech here get rid of the LCD or put the LCD screen and the buttons on a separate board that plugs into this board you can use nice good quality membrane buttons then you don't need a heavy heat shrink to protect it all so that when you actually put the thing in the model all you have is the camera head unit and the electronics on this little circuit board and when you want to turn it on or turn it off or mess around plug in the little LCD with a row of buttons along the bottom there and you'll be able to do all that then unplug it and fly so much simpler and then if you have a really bad crash the cost of replacing the pieces should be less because you'll have already have your LCD screen and your buttons safely on the ground they should, unless you actually hit them with your plane you're not going to damage them sounds like a much better idea to me but if you agree put them on put your comments below this video if you think that may be correct and if you'd prefer to have it set up like that but anyway that's the whole system this plugs into your UBEC or a 5 volt power supply of some kind and it, the power is quite critical you can't critical you can't just plug this into a 3 cell lipo or smoke will come out of this it has to be 5 volts or less and I see some talk of using a regulator to take the voltage down even lower than 5 volts now the footage I'm going to show you is I thought I'd better get a benchmark and make sure it works so this is as the camera was delivered it's the original firmware which is version 1.1 it's running it directly from a UBEC which gives us or from a ESC sorry which gives about 5.2 volts so let's have a look at how the video stacks up so here we are we've got the Foxtech camera here just zoom in a bit on this is the Horizon HD and I've put some velcro on the camera unit itself this is apparently the way they come so it wasn't because it's a production pre-production prototype and uh, you can see that the um, little board with its LCD screen is actually small enough to fit inside my AXN my beautiful AXN floater in fact what I've already done is put the velcro on there so I can just put this little camera unit here on my camera mounting velcro which lives there and the rest of it actually fits up here in the front of the canopy and what I've done is because this is only a four channel receiver and this runs off the BIC and the ESC I've just used a little Y lead here on the one of the servo leads so I can get a 5 volt supply to run the run the camera so that's all that's involved in mounting it as I just that fits in there and then the, the canopy wherever I've left it goes on top simple as that so let's uh, let's fly it and see what the quality of video looks like out of the little Horizon HD 
Now, for some reason that I don't understand, there was no audio on this particular recording, so you're going to have to listen to my lovely voice as I describe what you're getting to see here. Now, this, as I say, is the completely original firmware, version 1.1, I think, and despite that, you'll notice that a the, the colours aren't too bad. I kind of like the fact that the greens aren't blown out and uh, the blues seem quite blue except for the occasional red tint that others have mentioned. Now there's one there when you see the sun. Uh, notice the excellent wide dynamic range. I was quite surprised by this because the camera doesn't sort of go black when the sun gets in the in the picture. And the, the resolution certainly seems good. Now I've got it on 1080p recording but I've had to render it down to 720p because uh, I'm not actually able to render 1080p at the moment, but I will do shortly in a later follow-up review of this camera. Now, you'll notice um, that there's not much difference between 1080p and 720p on YouTube anyway. It really doesn't make a whole deal of difference. So, I haven't touched this at all. There's no post-edit going on at all here. This is exactly as it came out of the camera, apart from simply rendering it. Um, if you don't like the colour tones, and of course you can always run through your favourite video editor and tweak the colours and contrast and things, but I thought you wanted to see exactly how it would look. And notice it doesn't really affect the flight characteristics of the AXN at all. It's a quite a light setup, and there's way less drag with this than you'd get with a GoPro HD. Uh, probably about the same as a keychain camera, actually, which is quite surprising. As you can see, lots of low and slow flying here, which um, is an indication it didn't actually load up the AXN too much. Again, a little bit of pink tinge when you get the bright sunlight there, but ver the later version of software apparently is supposed to help. And also, I'm running this on 5.2 volts directly from the BEC on the ESC. There's no extra voltage regulator there. What I will do in the next review is reduce the voltage to the recommended levels and see what difference it makes to the, the colour accuracy of the camera itself. I could make vrim vrim noises now I suppose. One thing I did notice was the occasional vertical artifact and the video, and they're very occasional, very brief, you might have seen a couple already in this, uh, they're just a vertical line that seems to come from nowhere, I don't know, that's on all the video playback software I've tried that line appears, so it's, it's not something to do with the rendering, it definitely seems to be something related to the camera itself. Again, look at that brilliant wide dynamic range. This could, if the composite video output is as good as the high def output, uh, this would work quite well as an FPV camera. In fact, I'm going to try that. One of my next uh, parts of this review is going to be trying it as the the actual FPV camera rather than using a separate camera. Now, one thing I mentioned earlier was that I was a bit concerned about the robustness of that LCD that goes along for a ride with the rest of the, the camera and the control board and as you'll see in a bit of video coming up I uh, um, in an unplanned manner I put that to the test to see just how strong the LCD would be when I had a little bit of a mid-air collision I'll show you that fairly shortly but this is just a bit more of the aerial video a little bit of air-to-air -air video here Notice the colour balance stays pretty good. It doesn't seem to shift and wander around like the keychain cameras tend to have quite a bit of variation in the greens and things, just depending on the, the colour that you're looking at. As you go, for example, if you put the nose down, you get all green. Quite often the shade of green will change dramatically. This camera doesn't seem to suffer from any perceptible white balance drift. That's a very good feature. There was one of those little artefacts, again, vertical line from nowhere. Quite often it's just when the sun's in picture. Okay, here's that uh, mid-air collision I'm talking about. It's uh, I was flying with AXN chasing a streamer, several AXNs in the air, and uh, mine happened to get hit with another one, lost a wing. And you'll see that uh, despite the rather unpleasant fall from a great height, the camera survived intact. Here's the streamer coming up. And without a wing, the AXN doesn't fly quite so well as it does with a wing lost the, I think it was the left or right hand wing, completely lost. 
So there we go. Those, that's the first review of this camera because now I'm going to take this thing. I'm going to fly it a lot. Over the next week I'm going to try and get lots and lots of flying hours filming lots of stuff with this camera and see how we get on. Because quite often I found when you review something and it all looks fine then you, a couple of weeks later you find irritating naggy little things that you don't like and you realise gosh perhaps I shouldn't have given it such a good review or you get a product that you think is pretty crappy and you find it's not so bad after all once you get to grips with it. So the preliminary review of this I would say it's, um, it's not a bad little camera. It's certainly for the money it's better value than a GoPro because GoPros are wildly overpriced in my, my opinion and it's certainly got more impressive performance than the number 11 keychain camera especially in respect to the 1080p a lot of problems ergonomically these keys and as I say the, the whole structure of the things need to be redefined it needs to have the separate LCD and keypad and just have the camera head and the electronics only bits that go on board so I'll go and fly it I'll tell you what I think of it and uh, if you've got any comments put them on the bottom of this video and we'll see how it works out so stay tuned for about a week there'll be a follow-up a second look at the Horizon HD FPV and recording camera from Foxtech.